This is Essie Featured. This is the power of sports. This is where I used to sit and watch the athletes work out. That was an emotional day. The day we returned to where our lives changed forever. In your sport, a high jumper is responsible for raising their own bar. That isn't our story. Our story is how we're raising the bar together. This is the man, local Sacramento favorite, Jamie Nieto. High jumping is something that I didn't have to worry or depend on somebody else to help me to jump higher. It was just all about me. The highlight of my career was competing at the Olympic trials in Sacramento, my hometown. Jamie Nieto gets a personal best with this clearance of 7'7 seven, and 3 quarters. Nieto will win it. I ran off the pit, took off my shirt, doing backflips, and I was like, I'm on the Olympic team. I'm going to Athens, Greece. Clearance. At the Olympics, I jumped my personal best of seven feet eight inches. I placed fourth. That was when I first saw you in your back flips. You didn't know me yet, but it was my first Olympics too, competing for Jamaica in the 400 meter hurdles. I ran again in Beijing in 2008, and even though an injury kept me from competing in London in 2012, I was still there, but this time as your girlfriend by your side to cheer you on. In 2012, I ended up jumping 7-6 and placing sixth. Oh, but to be the oldest American high jump to ever make an Olympic team at 35 years old, it was an amazing accomplishment. You retired shortly after those Olympics, but I could see just how excited you were to start the next chapter in your life, coaching. That day in April of 2016, began like any other at the track. We started doing some training stuff, and then I remember telling a friend of mine, I still can do backflips, of course. Done backflips my whole career, is no big thing. And I was like, oh, let me do this backflip real quick so I can send it to my friend. April 22nd, 2016. I was like, yeah, see, told you, no big deal, you know? And then um, I was like, you know, let me try one more because I didn't feel like I jumped up as high. Seconds later, our lives changed forever. You'll be okay, Coach. You'll be okay. As we said, 911. We are at the Zusa track, track show right now. We need an ambulance right now. Our coach just hit his head. As I pushed up, one of my feet slipped. And as my body flipped over uh, after hitting my head, um, I felt like I couldn't feel my legs anymore. And I was like, uh oh. He's awake, but he can't breathe good. <laughs> But he can't feel anything. They took me to the hospital. He had this tube down my throat and I couldn't talk. We did the MRI. I knew it was bad. And I knew that this was going to be a tough road to get out of. Paralyzed. That's what the doctor told us. It was devastating to hear and even tougher to accept. Early on when you were at your lowest, struggling to come to grips with your new life, and with the 2016 Olympic Games just months away, I knew my dream of a third and final Olympic Games was no longer what mattered most. I knew what I had to do and where I had to be. How could you not love somebody who does that, who puts their own dreams on the line and say, let me stop this for a second because I need to take care of this person who really needs me. Let me see if I can get it out. Just seeing you open the box on your own to put the ring on my finger, I couldn't believe it. Yay! The 
doctors told me that you may get 30% function back. But I knew you, and I knew us. A hurdler and a high jumper were used to overcoming obstacles. Less than 1% of Americans make an Olympic team. Even less than 1% of Olympians jump a PB at the Olympic Games. I've done both. What makes me think I can't do this? Hey. Starting my rehab physically was very challenging. In your mind, it's so simple. All I gotta do is pick up my leg and step there. But your body is like, we don't do that anymore. So you have to kind of retrain your body neurologically. You get frustrated, you know, if you can't pick something up or things keep dropping out of your hand. It's a continuous thing. It's like, oh, today I can stand up from this level, or oh, I have a little bit more mobility in this left arm. That's great, Jamie. As our wedding approached, your sole motivation was for us to walk together as husband and wife. Push off of it, that's right. My goal was to walk down the aisle. That was it, that was it. Siobhan said it's probably gonna take about 150 steps to get in and out of the church. You got it. <sighs> Every day I watched you get stronger and stronger. Coming from my athletic background, it was Siobhan that knows what it takes to motivate, and she says, you're not gonna get to use your walker today. You're gonna have to just walk holding my hand. Push off of it, that's right. <sighs> nice, good, keep taking it up, keep taking it up. Right, good. <sighs> nice, Jamie, nice, Jamie. <sighs> it's just one step at a time. You're strong, you raise the bar, right? Most people will never know the courage and the strength it took for you to stand here. I'm so proud of you. I, Jamie Earl Nieto, take thee, Siobhan Kaywana Stoddard, to have and to hold from this day forward. And on this day in front of our friends, family, and God, I vow to walk through this life with you forever. I, Siobhan Kaywana Stoddard, take thee without reservation to my wedded husband. I proudly present unto you Mr. and Mrs. Jamie Earl Nieto. You okay, babe? Yeah. It just really reinstated why I love this woman. Nice and relaxed. <laughs> Great. 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 Being there through thick and thin, through rich or poor, through death, through his part. Those words really mean a lot. Jamie Earl Nieto, you are my love, my inspiration, my everything. And I promise from this day forward to be by your side till death do us part and whatever challenges we might face in life, we will face them together. I love you. <laughs>